You're watching the Western Athletic Conference on ESPN. Welcome to a Saturday night in Abilene, Texas. It's family weekend at Abilene Christian. And they're excited about their 2-1 Wildcats as they get ready to host Western New Mexico. And now welcome inside the broadcast booth, everybody. Zach Carlisle along with Coy Oslin, Paige Taylor down on the sideline. Well, let's talk about ACU. They're 2-1 and one, uh, coming off of a game last week against Missouri in a loss, but their fans and these coaches are really excited about these Wildcats. Yeah, you said it was a loss, but things are different. It feels different with this ACU team offensively and defensively. Keith Patterson has brought in a fantastic team this year. Well, it's a non-conference two-dump for the Wildcats up against Western New Mexico out of the Lone Star Conference, and they're two and one for the first time in seven years. A big game for them tonight on the road. Yeah, competitive team and a good conference got a chance to get an upset here on the road in Abilene, former Lone Star land itself. Yeah, this is a good Division II team in Western New Mexico, and let's talk more about these Mustangs and head coach Philip V. Hill and send it down to the third member of our team, Paige Taylor. Thanks, guys. This is only Philip V. Hill's second season as head coach for Western New Mexico. Before coming to Western New Mexico, he was the running backs coach and the recruiting coordinator for Stephen F. Austin from 2019 to 2021. This is his 15th season as a collegiate coach and second season as a head coach. And even though last season they only won one game, they are hoping to build onto that in 2022. Back to you guys. Paige, thank you very much. It is warm tonight in Abilene, Texas. At least they're not playing in the sun. The shadows have completely covered the field. Western New Mexico won the toss. They defer to the second half, and so they will kick it deep to ACU. Tanner Bobic sends us away with a pooch kick. Glad you're with us tonight. Off we go, a fair catch. Gets this thing started. So time for the Abilene Christian offense to get it going. And Maverick McIver, the guy leading the way at quarterback for ACU. Yeah, Zach, what can you say about Maverick McIver? He's come in here and he's really feeling himself this year. Had a good year so far, the transfer from Texas Tech. Sophomore out of San Angelo, Texas. Highlighted it a couple of times throughout the season. Hadn't played any meaningful football since 2018. Four years later, back on the field after a lot of injuries and transferring, and he is QB1 for these Wildcats. After the fair catch, they start at the 25, and Jeremiah Dobbins gets the game's first carry, and it's a pickup of just over five yards. ACU is going to want to get that running game going tonight. They've got a lot of options at running back. Yeah, Dobbins got a good block there and just took off. The ACU offense as we peeked at them for a second. Uh, it's a good offensive line. It's a young offensive line. Two redshirt freshmen and two sophomores in the lineup for the Wildcats. Five minutes on the rush. McIver's running free and down he goes at the 15-yard line. Tylen Coleman, the D tackle, got home for the sack for Western New Mexico. Good start for the Mustangs. That ACU offense, as we peaked uh, briefly before, go lightly Clark and Catalan, the receivers. There's the offensive line, and the tight end is Colt Cooper. That is a loss of 11, and so third down and 20 here for ACU. They go backwards on second down. ACU 41% on third down this year. Blitz coming again, down he goes again. Back at the five yard line. Pressure coming, Coleman gets home again. What a start for Tylen Coleman and this defense. Fantastic job breaking through the line and getting two sacks in a row. Good way to start the game for the guy. So ACU a lightning fast three and out that saw them lose nearly 20 yards on the opening drive. And that means Logan Burke's got a kick from inside his end zone, nearly out the back of it. And there's pressure on the kick. 
And it's returnable from the 47, David Tellis. And he'll take it inside the 42. Big hit at the end. Put on by Abner Dubar. Rather, Davion Johnson. That's Davion Johnson with the hit. But now, Western New Mexico comes out with fantastic field position for Devin Larson. Yeah, Devin Larson's had him a really good season so far. Pretty good passer rating this year, but solid quarterback all around for this offense. Got a lot of yards through the air. At the plus 44, starts Western New Mexico out of the Lone Star Conference. Larson, the leading passer in the conference this season. He starts with one. And it is a pass behind his intended target. And I couldn't tell who that was on the outside. Starting offense for Western New Mexico. Smith, the running back, good, talented receivers. They love to go through the air. And it is a veteran offensive line, three seniors on the right side. Hand off, and Jordan Pop is all over Maurice Smith. That's a loss of two for Pop, the senior out of Nebraska. Yeah, really good play there. Just broke the line and took down Smith very quickly. So now third and 12. And this Abilene Christian defense is off to a pretty good start this season, Coy. They have really made things challenging. Even last week, they pinned down the Missouri Tigers pretty well in Columbia. Third and 12, Larson to throw. Checks it underneath and forever to go and barely a gain of three, maybe four to Jamon Chambers, the backup running back out of Washington. So that's a pretty good start for the ACU defense who was on the wrong side of the field. Yeah, really good defensive stops for both teams. Definitely not something you want to see the whole game if you're either side. And so this will be a punt for Western New Mexico to get things going. Jack Rasmussen has not had a touchback yet this year, and he's pinned six inside the 20 yard line. Trying to do the same here. ACU lets it go. That's headed to the corner and to the eight yard line it goes. 34 yard punt. Both teams empty on the opening drives of the game. Wildcats have it in the first. Both teams empty on their opening possession of the game, and Abilene Christian will start at their own eight-yard line, and the offensive line for ACU had some issues there on that opening drive of the game. Yeah, it's just blown blocks, guys exploding up the middle and finding MacGyver in the backfield. And he is by himself, and now Rovon Banks Jr. comes in into the backfield. And ACU starts with a run with the freshman Running back, and he'll take it across the 10 for a gain of three. Let's take a peek at the Western New Mexico defensive starters tonight. The defensive end, uh, the defensive line has four veterans on it. We'll get to that in just a moment. Second down and seven coming up for Abilene Christian. Second down was the problem on the first drive. It was a big sack back to back. And now ACU on the slant, incomplete, going for Kobe Clark, Kenny White in coverage and third and long here for ACU. Yeah, really good coverage there. Kobe had to play defense on that one, try to prevent an interception. And so far, not so good for the Abilene Christian offense. Here's the Western New Mexico defense. We've been talked about the defensive line. It's got four veterans. This is a very veteran group. You'll see a lot of Clavon Kane, the junior linebacker in the middle as well. Third and seven for Abilene Christian. Four man rush, McIver middle. It's tipped in the air and incomplete. Looking for Kobe Clark, and Kane was all over him, and that's another three and out to start the game. Yeah, they're coming out swinging and bucking. Look at him go. Fantastic job by Clavon Kane. I don't know if Clark catches that. Can he get? He can get the first down anyway, though. That was a two or three yard pass. Just attempt. a desperation throw for yards. Try to get a good punt. 
And so far, so good for the Western New Mexico defense here. Holding strong. So ACU's going to punt it. Logan Burke, his second one already. This is a fair catch at the 49 and a punt of 40 yards. And so field position battle has been completely won so far by Western New Mexico. And so Devin Larson, the leading passer in the Lone Star Conference, the transfer from Iowa State, will have drive number two for the Mustangs. Western New Mexico has already played a couple of Lone Star games. They're one and one in league play so far. Get to that in a second. That's a quick screen, and that is a tackle for Tristan Anderson along the boundary. Wildcats defensively. Tyron Bradley's been all over the place for ACU, the defensive end. Moore and Young, two very good young linebackers, and they love those safeties, Moffitt and Dubar. Boy, Egbo's been good on the corner as well. This is on the ground, and this will be a run for Larson, the QB, on the keep. On his own read, he'll take it to the 47-yard line, and now third down and five coming up. Really good play action there. Had the defense fooled with Jamon Chambers running off to the right side, but a good QB keep for Devin Larson. Gets some yards for Western New Mexico. And so very similar situation to their opening drive. Third down on the plus side of the field. But Abilene Christian this year defensively, they're only giving up 31% conversions on third down. Five wide for Larson. Four-man rush, floats it down the sideline, adjusting, and is it a catch? Yes, it's a catch for Toby Shonike. First down. Really good job. Good coverage from ACU, but that's Chambers, the running a, back. Gets a gets a good chance there, and Chambers pulls in the ball. Really good receiving back. If you'll watch him throughout this game. I thought that was 17. It was 15, the running back. They're going to throw it to him again, and it's behind him. And he would have had a chance to make a move on Dubar, the safety, incomplete, second down. And I can't believe that throw and catch there on third down. That was incredible. Yeah, really good defensive pressure there. Chambers just was not ready for that ball, but he had an open lane if he had gotten that one in his hands. They love to throw to Chambers out of the backfield. They love to throw to Chambers, and the few times they do rush it, they like to hand it to him, too. They've got Maurice Smith, the starting running back, out there on second and 10 as Western New Mexico is into the red zone. Larson, middle, open, catching it and taking it to the 12 is Devin, David Tellis, the leader in receptions. He leads the Lone Star Conference with now 23 grabs on the year. When you get a QB combo like Telez and Larson, that's a fantastic effort. You can get downfield real quick and get some points on the board. And you saw it, those little slant passes are going to do it for you. ACU trying to hold on third down and two. Western New Mexico's 41% this year on third down. A chance early on the road, playing up a level. Larson caught, touchdown! On the slant for Charles Byers. Connection for six in Western New Mexico strikes first on the road. Yeah, Larson just snuck that one into the hands of Byers, his fourth touchdown this season. If you'll take a look at it here, just an easy pass. No, no quick deal, just an average Saturday night for Larson. Over the middle, get, a, get on the board. That's Larson's 10th TD pass of the year. And Byers leading the team with now, as Coy mentioned, his fourth of the season. Extra point is good. Six plays, 52 yards. The visiting Mustangs lead at 7 zip.
As a proud Texan, I want my family to have the best future possible, and that mission is also a part of the business I founded. At OSO, we strive to make a positive, impactful difference in the lives of our employees as well as our customers. Specifically, we want to love our neighbor as ourselves, and those values were shaped when I got my MBA from ACU. Accelerate your career online at acu.edu. The best tailgates start with the best beef. And the best beef starts with United Supermarkets. United Supermarkets, where we do beef the best. Get great seats, safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Our early leaders sought a new Get great seats, safer, simpler, and smarter. 7-0 Western New Mexico. They've won the field position battle. Their defense has looked great, and then they take it 52 yards for the touchdown. Very impressed with the Mustangs so far. Yeah, that pass game is definitely on, but that defense looks really good. Top tier matching up with that ACU offensive line. Yeah, he, that line is getting beat up right now for the Wildcats, but the pass down the sideline to Chambers and then the TD to Byers, and Devin Larson is off to a good start for Western New Mexico. is gonna have their third time touching it, another short kick. Returnable from the 16, and a seam for Jeremiah Dobbins, and he'll take it across the 45-yard line. Let's take a look at the keys to the game when ACU has it. Well, we've already seen this happen today. You've got to shut down Western New Mexico's pass game. They've done a really, really good job throwing so far. ACU's got to work on that. But also, try your running game. New Mexico has had kind of a hard time this year allowing 143 yards per game on the ground. ACU so far on the ground has run it for negative 16 yards. They have got to figure that out. In fact, negative 16 total yards for the Wildcat. Offense in the first two drives. And ACU's got a backup quarterback in the game in Ethan Long, and Jeremiah Dobbins is going to take it for eight yards. So Long, the junior out of Oregon, takes over at the quarterback spot for ACU to transfer from Arizona State. Yeah, Zach, maybe one of those things we thought we'd see today, this being a kind of a tune-up game for ACU, but not this early. Yeah, that's out interesting. There. Didn't appear to be injury related. ACU goes to Dobbins on the ground, right side. Good hole, big burst. Dobbins was the leading rusher at Missouri last week, takes it to the 38 to pick up a nine. Yeah, that's just what I was saying in the keys to the game. You've got to run the ball, and pounding it up the middle is going to be pretty good, and he can go. Right behind right guard Jacob Thielen, the sophomore out of Colorado. Just like that, on the ground, as you mentioned, Coy, now they're in plus territory for the first time. Back to the ground, back to Dobbins. Not much this time, maybe a loss on the play. And there is Clayton, Clavon Kane rather. He is all over the place. The leading tackler for Western New Mexico. Let's look at keys to the game for the other side, for the Mustangs. Yeah, you've got to shut down Kendall Catalan and Tristan Golightly, two of the top targets on this ACU offense. And then also hold ACU close in the fourth if you're still in this. You've got to do that. They've done a really good job scoring in the fourth. Go lightly, or rather, for ACU Catalan, not out there. ACU go back to Dobbins. He has been busy on the drive. Takes it for eight on the left side, and it was the safety Pat Nunn to make the tackle third down coming up. But we haven't seen Catalan. Blaine Taylor's been out there a lot. 
Emma and Tristan go lightly for Appley Christian. We haven't seen Long have to put it up yet. He <laughs> may have to here on third down. First action for Long this season. They're going to run it. And Dobbins made a move, but he is going to come up a yard short of the marker. And the tackle made by Quentin, Quintron Gallo, the defensive back. It's short. Really interesting lineup there. Three eligible receivers on the left side. They put Go lightly in motion, trying to trick up this defense and gave it to Dobbins. It's worked so far. Him and Caleb Gutierrez. ACU's going to go for it in the jumbo package on fourth and a yard. They'll give it to Dobbins. He's got it. Second effort. It was right at the marker. It appeared he had it pretty easily. And he does indeed have the first down. Yeah, Zach, coming back from that New Mexico, Western New Mexico score there. It's been interesting to see. It feels like there's a there's new life in this ACU offense. They seem a little bit quicker on their feet, and it seems a little bit more lively. They needed one, and they got exactly one with Toppins. And he's up to 32 yards rushing, 33 now for the game. ACU's been run heavy this drive. Now the fake, and McIver's back out there. He's going to throw, and it's dropped. Dropped by Jed Castles. He had potentially a touchdown. Castles, a transfer out of Texas Tech. He had the ball in his hands, and that just comes down to a drop pass. He had an open lane and not too much pressed coverage, but just in and out of the hands it goes. So this has been a quarterback carousel on this drive. <laughs> Long started it. McIver's back out there, and now second and 10. I wonder if that was an equipment malfunction, something, but they had Ethan Long out there. Rovon Banks, the running back for ACU. Davion Johnson in motion. They toss it to him. It's a reverse. Kendall Catalan scored on this play in week one, and it was a touchdown on that exact play, and he gets maybe one this time. Kenny White, the safety making the stop. Yeah, those reversals are fun to do. Take a peek here, just the toss back, but not something you want to pull out this early in a game, especially against a Division II opponent. LJ Vongzi in there as well. Third and nine now, and I'm curious to see how ACU does here on third down. They're 0 for 3 to start the night on this down. Four-man rush, McIver's gonna take off, now throws, and it's too far for Castles, the tight end. ACU will have to settle for a field goal try. Don't know why McIver didn't try to keep it there. Could have gotten some yards for a field goal. You take a look at this. I don't know if he felt pressure to throw that one. It was just way too deep out of the back of the end zone. So not a man there at all. So Blair Zepeda will kick it 44 yards. He's had an interesting season so far. Missed his first three. Didn't make one last week at Missouri. It was from 39. This is from 44. It's a good snap. It's a good hold. And Zepeda knocks it through to get Abilene Christian on the board. ACU takes their third drive and converts the field goal. It's a 7-3 game late in the first. Abilene Christian goes 10 plays and takes it 28 yards and converts with the players have paid a 44 yarder to get on the scoreboard to make it a 7-3 ball game. Western New Mexico will get it back. Cool, your thoughts early on here in this first quarter. Rough start for ACU, fantastic start for Western New Mexico. They held strong in the red zone in their own half of the field in that last possession. And the ball comes back out to the 25-yard line. And this Western New Mexico offense 
They moved it there. I mean, they've, they've had to start basically at midfield. Let's take a look at our impact players when Western New Mexico has the ball. Well, I've talked about Jamon Chambers already. They like to throw to him. They like to run with him. This guy's fun, first in, in rushing and second in receiving. Reese Young for ACU. Young defensive player, done a good job this year. 16 total tackles this year and had six last week versus Mizzou. Second leading tackler on the team is Reese Young for Abilene Christian. Nothing like starting a freshman and middle linebacker at the FCS level. First down and 10 for Larson. Taking a shot, going deep again. They haven't been afraid to do it. Adjusting to it and making the catch. Down the sideline is DeJounte Thomas, the redshirt junior out of California. Yeah, all credit here to Tyron Bradley for ACU getting some pressure on the quarterback there, but you look deep downfield. Not much of a sliding catch, you want to say, but fantastic effort. And they are rolling it incomplete. So second down and 10. That would have been the first catch of the season for Thomas. Uh, initially, they had ruled it a catch, but it is incomplete. And so back to the 25. And they screen to the outside, trying to get the edge, tiptoeing the sideline. How much yardage are they going to give Byers, who scored the touchdown earlier? Only a couple of yards, third and eight coming up. Yeah, Byers obviously saw him score that touchdown earlier. Really dynamic receiver, tried to get down the side there, but just not enough room. Injury for ACU, it appears, on the sideline. Can't quite tell who that is over there. That Wildcat sideline. So third and eight coming up for Western New Mexico. Just under four to go in the opening quarter. Seven to three ball game. So it's an injury. And well, just real quickly, you know, so we were talking briefly, Western New Mexico, they've already played two conference games. So it's kind of a breather from them from that. They go on the road, play up a level. Uh, they're one and one to start conference play, losing at Central Washington, and then winning a great one against Western Oregon last week. So it's one of those situations where they're kind of in between league games and ACUs getting ready to start league play. And uh, there's Philip Vigil, the head coach for Western New Mexico. So a tricky spot for both of these teams tonight. Yeah, Philip Vigil this year, fantastic job coming in on the season already, having a much better year than last year. But they're in this Lone Star Conference, very deep on the West. They've been on the road further than ACU this year. A lot of travel for this team. Already doubled their win total from a year ago. They're at two and one for the first time in seven years since 2015. Third and eight for Larson and company after the injury. ACU sends three, pass is dropped over the middle, looking for Smith out of the backfield. And a three and out for Western New Mexico. Yeah, that's the hardest thing to see in football. Maurice Smith going across the way there, needed a big catch. And when you're a running back, that's just one of those things you have to do. And in and out of the hands, but he'll get one again down the line. You know that for sure. So second punt of the game for Jack Rasmussen, a grad student who transferred from Missouri Western State, a Division II school from the MIAA conference. And this one will take a nice bounce for the Mustangs, still rolling. And that's a 50-yard punt for Rasmussen who booted a 66-yarder earlier this season. The Wildcat defense had been put in a couple of bad spots. They gave up the touchdown on the half the field here. And now here we come again, Ethan Long back out there at quarterback for ACU. Well, if it's, not, if it's not broke, don't fix it. They send it back out there. Great job on the last possession. He did not throw a pass, so he handed it off multiple times. Dobbins is rushed for 33 yards tonight. Now Rovon Banks Jr., the freshman who's got a ton of speed, flag is out on the run. About halfway through the run. And for the first time, we're going to hear from referee Michael Frame.
hold against Abilene Christian. And so spot foul to bring it back to the 20. So first and 14 coming up for Abilene Christian. This QB switcheroo we've seen so far, interesting from the Wildcats. I didn't expect that tonight. Yeah, they've got a lot of depth at the QB at the QB position, but if it's working, it's works, you know. <laughs> yeah, no question. Long going to throw for the first time this season. Kobe Clark to the middle across the 35. Pick up a 15 and a first as we take a peek at the impact players when Abilene Christian is on offense. Yeah, Kendall Catalan, the transfer from Arkansas. Haven't seen him yet today, but when he does, he's a fantastic player. ACU goes quickly with Rovon Banks Jr., and he's not going to get much. Jordan Davis. So Catalan for ACU. Yeah. How about Western New Mexico? Yeah, Western New Mexico. I took a peek at Clavon Kane. What can you talk about? This guy transferred from Long Beach City College, leading tackler, fantastic player for them. We've seen a lot of him already today. Three-yard pickup on first down. And so ACU with second down and seven after that big completion to Kobe Clark. Long stays out there. One for one to start his career at Abilene Christian. He's going to throw again to the middle again to Clark again. Into Western New Mexico territory. 11 more. Yeah, ACU legend right there, Kobe Clark. This guy is, he's elite. He's really one of the best players that has been through this program in a long time. And one of those guys you can really rely on as you've seen back-to-back -back receptions for a lot of yards. And ACU moving the chains. Second all-time in catches in Abilene Christian history. Long to throw again, pressure this time, goes to the sideline, Zarek Scruggs in coverage. Incomplete, and that was well defensed by Quintron Gallo again. He's been busy at the corner spot. AC not afraid to take a shot. They love going deep down the field. Yeah, if it's first down and you're around midfield, it's, it's a good time to throw downfield. Great coverage though for Western New Mexico deep down there. ACU moved it 44 yards for a field goal. A drive ago, trailing 7-3 late in the first, and Rovon Banks get it in his hands. He'll take it for 10 and a first. They love this freshman out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah, pocket opened up for him. He saw it and took it. ACU goes quickly again. Long throws the screen to Clark. His third catch already. Nice move. Kobe Clark's got a first. If I'm Keith Patterson looking down the line, is this hurry up offense going to be what's the key to trying to walk out of this first half with a good offensive explosion? Take a look here. Just smart route running by Kobe Clark. Sees his lane and just cuts up the middle. Hard to catch him. Ethan Long off to a good start. Three for his first four. Back to Banks on the ground. He's wrestled down. That's well played. Up front there, Caleb Gutierrez came in to help out two from the linebacker spot. Sam Walla as well. No gain, second and 10. ACU's going lightning fast. Middle, open, a catch for Davion Johnson. 15 yards, he took a hit at the end too. Yeah, transfer from Southwestern Community College. He just elevates up the middle and snags that one, reels it in. Can't get his footing and get some yardage there, but nevertheless, another first down. Timeout on the field, ACU driving, trailing 7-3 at the end of one. Welcome back to Abilene, Texas in the start of the second quarter. WAC football here on ESPN. ACU in the red zone at the 12-yard line with Rovon Banks on the ground. Zach Carlisle with Coy Oslin, Paige Taylor on the sideline. 
and our entire crew. Glad to have you with us on a Saturday night here in the big country. Abilene Christian trying to drive to take the lead. I didn't think it would be in the second quarter and Abilene Christian would be trailing in this one, but that's where it's at as they have a second down and six here from the eight yard line. Ninth play of the drive for ACU. Long off the fake. Dumps it in the flat and down to the ground. Incomplete the signal looking for Jed Castles. So third down coming up for ACU. Yeah, Castles, he's had a rough start to the game. Looking to turn around here in the second quarter. Not the start he wanted, but short little pass. Oh, it got tipped, didn't it? Got deflected. Great job Another on the replay to show play that. from the defense. Boy, Western New Mexico's off to a fantastic start. They're giving up 25 points per game, but just three through the first quarter. Third and six for ACU. Off the fake, long, dart caught. Johnson It's going to be tackled. He is close to the first down. He needed the two-yard line. Did he get it? He did not. It's fourth and short coming up. Davion Johnson and Kobe Clark have been the story of this drive so far. Another good snag from him. He's had to snag some of those out of the air, but catches and catches and catches. Fourth and less than a yard for ACU. They're going to go for it for the second time. <laughs> Good work from ACU's offensive line. They look completely different. What I've seen this drive so far, they took the momentum into their hands and it results with six on the board. It was a slow start for Abilene Christian, but a couple of scoring drives in a row now for ACU. Blair Zapata's extra point is good. That's 12 plays, 76 yards for ACU, who leads it now, 10-7. Our early leaders sought a new campus on which to build a better future. Surely they could not have imagined how much their vision would grow. Today, Abilene Christian is recognized in national benchmarks for student success outcomes, research productivity, and athletic accomplishments. As we embark on next steps, we are uniquely poised to become one of the nation's premier Christian universities. We invite you to join us. We will climb higher together. In the WAC, we value sportsmanship on the field and in the stands. We take pride in playing fair and being honest. We honor the game by showing respect for our opponents and the officials, the fans and our team. Great sportsmanship is about taking ownership after a loss and being humble after a win. We want you to team up with us by staying positive on the sideline. Because great sportsmanship is what unites us. We, we are the Western Athletic Conference. As a single mom and a full brand new Moody Coliseum on the campus of Abilene Christian University. That was Chapel on Friday. It's so nice to have it back open and events inside. Boy, do they know how to have a little bit of fun for Praise Friday at Abilene Christian. And just across the way from Moody is Wildcat Stadium, a building that opened in 2017. First year experienced with that man, Keith Patterson, who is his first year as the head coach 
of Abilene Christian. And so it took a while tonight here, Coy. Down seven to nothing, but 10 unanswered, and ACU's got the lead. Yeah, Keith Patterson, he's all business, and this team has shown it. They brought in that hurry-up offense in that last drive, and it worked out for them. So ACU goes on a 12-play, 76-yard drive to take the lead 10 to seven here in the second quarter. And now they kick it away. Zapata will send that out the back of the end zone. It was fourth and less than one. ACU went for it and got the TD with Banks. Yeah, it pays dividends. Fantastic job from them. Cut up the middle, good blocks all around. Offensive line and the offense as a whole look completely different. And so, back to work comes this Western New Mexico offense that's totaled 56 yards. They have had a lot of short fields with the punt game and the way their defense started. Now trying to move at the length of the field will be a challenge tonight against this ACU defense. Keeping it, Larson, he'll take off here, get to the sideline. He's going to be close to the first down. He's going to get it. That's a gain of 11 for the QB. Hasn't done a lot of rushing this year. Positive yardage for him, though, is a good thing. They move the chains forward, and they keep the momentum going. Larson, in his second year with Western New Mexico, transferred from Iowa State after walking on at Iowa State over an offer from Idaho, then transfers down here and takes over. And he's off to a 2-1 and one record this year as the starting QB. That pass dropped over the middle, looking for Daniel Baca, the graduate tight end. Second and 10 coming up. Yeah, no receptions this year for Baca, but another slant route. Looked like it was going to work out. Didn't slip right out of the hands and a good release for ACU. They would much rather, they're more comfortable throwing the ball than they are on the ground. They're going to do it again. This ball's deflected in the air and nearly intercepted. Looked like Abner Dubar was going to have a chance at the pick. It's third and 10 coming up. Yeah, if I'm Dubar, I wouldn't beat myself up too much about that one. You've got to have an insanely good vertical if you wanted to snag that one. But ACU added pressure there. Everything feels a bit different going into this second half. But Western New Mexico has got to remember, they're not out of this one. They need the 46-yard line. Third and 10. Western New Mexico two for four on third down tonight. Four-man rush. Larson, middle, one-hander, but then unable to make it to the marker is Jamon Chambers. Boy, that was a heck of a catch, but he had a long way to go. That'll be fourth down now for the Mustangs. Yeah, like I said earlier, they like to use Chambers really dynamically. Good hands, good feet, but couldn't get it done there. Fourth down, ACU forces another one. Back to back. This will be a punt for Western New Mexico. This 10 to seven ball game, three minutes into the second quarter. Rasmussen's good. Inside the 10. That's a 52 yard punt now on the return and taking it up to the 24-yard line goes Kendall Catalan. ACU takes over with the 10-7 lead. to seven, Abilene Christian in front, and they will take over at the 24-yard line, and to the ground they go with Rovon Banks Jr., who scored the touchdown earlier. He <laughs> never actually went down on the play. He'll take it for maybe a gain of four yards. Coy, what surprised you so far? I think that just this 10-7 ball game here in the second quarter. You see these interdivisional matchups, you want to think that you know the FCS team will run away with it but Keith Patterson's had to do a lot of thinking on his feet we've seen McIver and we've seen Long go out there Ethan Long on second down and six 
He's going to throw it to the sideline, go lightly all by himself. Takes it to the 41 and a gain of 12 and a first down for ACU. Yep, just an easy read there, nice toss over. Don't overthink it. Straight to the Kansas transfer and more yards. Move the chains. Leader in yards this season receiving for ACU. First catch of the night for Go Lightly. 41 yard line. Third straight drive where ACU's moving it long. Trying to get away, he can't do it. The sack for Cervantes Reed. Take a look at the series history. These are two teams that haven't played a lot. Uh, three nothing all time. First meeting in nearly 30 years between these two teams. ACU moved up to Division I from the Lone Star Conference back in 2013. And now Western New Mexico, a part of the very big Lone Star Conference yeah. that spans a lot of the country. Loss of seven after the Reed sack. ACU sets up a screen. Rovon Banks, sideline blocking. Going to get a lot of that sack yardage back, and then he will have stepped out of bounds right at the original line of scrimmage. So third and 10 coming up. That had a chance at a bigger play, but they forced him to the boundary. Yeah, really good read here, just a toss over. Also great pressure from Western New Mexico. They've had a good game defensively, as we've said over a thousand times before it feels like, but more, more yards. Third to 10, four man rush, long, runs into a sack. Down he goes, David Melendez. He's got three and a half on the year now, fifth in the Lone Star Conference in sacks. Western New Mexico gets another one. This was all Melendez. That man took off the left side and just pressed him. Really, really hard sack you got to take there. And Long not the one to slip up. Big time stop for the Mustangs. Logan Burke will punt, fair catch. Called at the 21, that's a 44 yard punt. Going the length of the field has been difficult for both of these offenses here so far tonight. So when you can play the field position game correctly, both defenses are playing pretty well. Both defenses are playing really well and we've seen that translate over to the momentum of the offense. It seems like when Western New Mexico's gotten these big stops, they've been able to maximize that on offense, take that energy and Transferred over some yards. 10-7 ACU. It was 7-0 Western New Mexico after their second drive of the game. 10 unanswered for the Wildcats. Larson fakes it, throws it incomplete, and a flag down as well. This looks like it's on Western New Mexico. A lot of pressure from Reese Young on that last play on the outside. holding against Western New Mexico. I'm not sure if you could hear that or not, but it will be a 10 yard penalty. And so first and 20 coming up for the Mustangs. That's a couple of times now where they've had penalties on first down to stall their drives. They're gonna fake throw the screen and trying to keep his balance. There along the sideline is Jeremy Cooper, and he'll take it for maybe five, second and 15 coming up. Yeah, a lot of these pass offenses, some people will say, well, first and 20, that's not too much to overcome, but when you're this deep in your own territory, it's hard to come up with that, and just a stumble on the catch there. So they got half the penalty yardage back. Second and 15. Larson incomplete. Cooper was going deep there. And the throw was very short from Larson. Third down coming up. Yeah, a lot of pressure from ACU again. They've been breaking apart, apart this offensive line, this drive. And 
A lot of energy from ACU. Curious on the play call on third and 14. Had that tough to pick up against this good Abilene Christian defense. AC is going to rush just three. They'll set up a screen to the middle and nothing doing. Damian Hart's all over it. Forward progress got to be stopped at some point. <laughs> nothing for Maurice Smith. Three and out for the Mustangs. Yeah, ACU just ran them down. I think this last play is a good example of what happened here. And this drive did not fall the way they needed it to, but we've seen a lot of good punts so far from Western New Mexico and Jack Rasmussen. Yeah, he's a good one, isn't he? Negative five yards on that drive for Western New Mexico. They have yet to get to 100 total yards. We got a flag. Fourth and 15 turns into. Five more yards backwards. Fourth and 20. Standing in the end zones, Rasmussen. He can only do so much. From the 47, Catalan spins out of there. After a 36-yard punt, gets it into Mustang territory, but the flag on the return disc is coming back. It's against Abilene Christian. ACU will have it. Pretty good field position. Leading at 10-7, a surprising defensive battle in Appley. The community at ACU TV is exceptional. I think it's what really sets it apart from other universities and other organizations just on ACU's campus. Working at ACU TV, I have gotten so much great experience in all different aspects, whether that was just being taking on leadership roles or just learning new things and really just jumping in and being hands-on with equipment. So the first time I walked in here, I was a high school senior, but I walked in and I was blown away by the production and the level of production ACU was putting on. And so to see the amount of effort being poured into a sporting event at ACU on ESPN was huge. And so to see that as a high school senior sold it for me. I was like, yes, I'm gonna be at ACU because this is where I wanna be, this is where I can excel. Coming to college and to know that you're making content for ESPN. That's unreal for students to come in and be able to get hands-on experience that quickly. It's, 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 a, it's a blessing. I would have never thought that I would be doing things I'm doing now. If you said I was gonna be on ESPN Plus and working with professional reporters and, and seeing all the, the stuff that goes into that, I would have called you crazy because I didn't think that freshmen got that opportunity. Uh, but here at ACU, everyone Gets, to, gets that opportunity, and it's awesome. And I think that's what sets us apart from other universities. At a young age, we allow people to get that experience, and, that, and you only get better from there. Really not a lot of students across the world get to be able to do what we do here at ACU. If you want to be a journalism major, you want to be in sports broadcasting, this is the place for you. But you get the tools of what it's going to be like. You know, you want to work in Fox Sports, ESPN, those major networks one day. This is where you translate it. This is where you get that exact same experience. This is, this is first class. ACU up 10 to seven, halfway through quarter number two. Wildcat offense back to work. And Coy, we'll see if they can move it consistently. It's been pretty up and down so far. Yeah, it really has. They've tried a little bit of everything. They send Ethan Long back out for this drive. And ACU at the 35. Play number one, to the ground they go. Jeremiah Dobbins, good chunk. He'll take it for 14. ACU's been busy all the way around, including Kobe Clark. For more on Kobe, let's go down to Paige. 
Thanks, guys. ACU senior Kobe Clark surpassed Taylor Gabriel last week in Missouri to move into second place all time on the ACU receptions list. With his three catches tonight, he is now just 16 catches away from passing current ACU running backs coach Darrell Baden's record of 235 set back in 2007. Be sure to stay tuned during our halftime report to check out ACU TV's Connor Mullins feature with both Clark and Baden. Back to you guys. Well, how about during Paige's report, it's a flea flicker that goes absolutely nowhere. And there is Kobe Clark to just back up what Paige was talking about. He's got three catches tonight for 41 yards. And so 222 now, and still 13 away from catching our uh, the ACU running backs coach, but uh, Jarrell Badon, the Hall of Famer. But ACU going trickery there, and now second and 10 from right around midfield. Long throws, middle, Eric Scruggs has the, oh, and he, he fumbled the ball. It's recovered by Western New Mexico. They're gonna take over. Catch, fumble, turnover. Yeah, Scruggs had that one, but there's not much you can do about it. You take a look at it here. I think it was Desir Malloy who came up with the ball. Let's look. That's just textbook. You try to get your hands in there as you go down and strip the ball. What about a takeaway, Western New Mexico? How about that? That's the first turnover of the night. Goes for the Mustang. Scruggs caught it. And then the fumble. Four-man rush here now for Devin Larson, and that is incomplete. Trying to go over the middle to Charles Byers, who caught the touchdown earlier. Yeah, you like a, a linebacker to be able to watch the rush, but also play good in the pass. Reese Young, good job there breaking that one up. Almost had him one. I'm surprised they didn't go review that catch and fumble. I think it was a catch and a fumble, but it, it would all happen so quickly. I'm surprised they didn't double check on that. Second and 10 at the 35. ACU 134 yards, leading by three, just 76 total yards for these Mustangs tonight. Second down, a handoff, oh, nothing doing. Backwards that goes, that's Reese Young flying in there for the big hit. Yeah, I said it at the beginning of this game, Reese Young, he is a impact player for sure. He's someone that can really cut up the middle, like I said, also he can cover in the backfield. Nowhere for Javon Chambers to go that time. Redshirt freshman out of Tacoma, Washington. Young, a freshman out of Stephenville, Texas. Good looking linebacker, third and 11. Western New Mexico was two for their first two on third down, 0 for four cents. Four man rush, plenty of time. Larson lets it fly way too deep. Defender goes, or rather the receiver goes down. Does Allen Ortiz, but no flag and it is fourth down and ACU holds after the turnover. Yeah, I gotta give credit to Tristan Anderson there for ACU. Good job from the freshman out of Oklahoma. He did a good job slowing up the receiver there and. Incomplete pass and a forced turnover again for ACU on the three and out. Under six minutes to go until halftime, and it's 10 to seven. I definitely would not have expected that coming in here tonight. Rasmussen again, punters have been busy. Fair catch, Catalan. 44 yard punt. What's the solution here for these offenses? We'll find out on the other side, 10-7 ACU.
Abilene Christian up 10-7. Low scoring game here in Abilene, Texas. Rovon Banks on the ground to get this drive started. And Coy, I don't know what the solution is, but these offenses are really struggling here in this first half. Yeah, the Lone Star Conference brings a lot of good offenses, and, and ACU should have expected this, but not to this extent. I think that comes down to their offensive line in those early drives in New Mexico. Western New Mexico is able to set the standard. No gain on that play. Ethan Long, we've seen him a bunch here in this first half, flips it out to Banks near the sideline. He'll pick up maybe five or so. Maverick McIver we saw in the first drive, and then for a handful of plays on drive two, not since. It's been Ethan Long, the junior out of West Lynn, Oregon. In 2019, he played in 10 games at Arizona State. He played at quarterback, wide receiver. He played the H-back. He was on special teams, all of that. Then he redshirted in 2020 and transferred to ACU this season. Third down and four, Long gonna put it up to the middle. It's Noah Caldwell stumbling across the 40. He'll take it to the 43 and a pickup of 14 on third down. Yeah, really good pass there. Good call on third down, finding someone deep in the hole and move the chains. Here we go, ACU, and looks like there's someone down on the field. Yeah, that's an injury for Abilene Christian might just be cramps. I'm telling you, I mean, not weirdly hot, but it is almost 96, 97 degrees tonight at the end of September. We had the first day of fall this week, but I forgot to tell Abilene, Texas that. And so there could be some cramping going on tonight. Well, that's one of those things that you can look at even when you when you recruit, as you know, down here, these West Texas guys, they're, they're adjusted to it and they, they can feel it. But some of these guys, they come down from the northeast, they come from the northwest, and I'm sure it's similar for western New Mexico. So about four and a half to go. Uh, until halftime, and coming up we'll have our halftime report with stats and analysis and features and all of that fun coming up from Abilene for this ESPN halftime report. 10 to seven, Abilene Christian, two and one on the season with wins over Lamar and Prairie View A&M at home, losing at Missouri. Last Saturday, Missouri, who heartbreaker today at Auburn. Second and uh, rather first to 10 for Ethan Long and he is sacked again. They haven't had ACU's offensive line's number completely, but they've had it in these clutch moments when momentum seems to be shifting, that New Mexico defense, Western New Mexico defensive line is able to shut them down and cut them apart. That might have been Nazir Malloy, the senior to transfer from Fort Hayes State on the defensive line. Second down and 16 now. Boy, this Mustang defense is playing well. Four man rush, screen for Banks. Gets a block, not enough, and he's right at the line of scrimmage. That is well played by linebacker Sipa Leafa, the sophomore. For me, that's an interesting call on second down with that deep in the hole. You've got to maybe think about running the ball there because you're definitely going to be throwing on third down. What's the call here? Four-man rush, long running for his life. Going to have to take off. He needs 15 yards. Oh, he's going to get it. Ethan Long, some magic in the pocket for 18 yards. You said he's going to need 15. He got a little bit more than that. Smart route running, good block on the outside from his receiver. Really well done. I, I, you know, that's just textbook football. That Banks, the running back, yeah. laying him a Rovon block. Yeah, Banks, the freshman. Now long to the air, and do they get a foot in? Yes, Patrick Ballard, his first catch of the year. The junior out of Houston, the UNLV transfer. Good catch, good route. He was wide open with room to spare. Takes that for a Baker's dozen, 13-yard pickup. Two and a half coming. Boy, I tell you what, that play of the game right beat might be Ethan, Young, or Ethan Long's run on third down depending on the outcome of this drive. 
ACU moving before the break now. First down. Banks gets a block. Rovon Banks taken off. Pylon, he is out of bounds at the two. 28 yards. Phenomenal job up front, and Banks did the rest. Yeah, Banks got a block a little while ago, got him here in this field position. Why don't I take the ball, he says. That's all speed right there. You look at the end of the play, though. Kendall Catalan almost had a block that could have got him in the end zone. Just a game of inches right there. That's a season-long rush for Abilene Christian this season of 28 yards. It's an injury on the field. It's for Western New Mexico. We've had quite a few times of the game being stopped due to injuries. So two minutes and change to go before the break. Ethan Long with the third down run, then Banks rips one for 28 right here. Yeah, Banks, I mean, all speed. He was going to outrun him, but he just ran out of field. And he can fly, can't he? My goodness. Then the question was, was he going to get to the pylon before he went out of bounds and rule him out at the two-yard line? You look back at the past few years of ACU, they've had a good running back core. That's something they've really perfected. They've always had good wide receivers, but really good running backs. And Banks adds to that legacy here in his freshman year. Ugh. Never want to see that. I believe... That is C. Palaiafa, the sophomore linebacker that they're walking off. Trying to under his own power. Boy, how big is that 18 yard run on third and 15 now from Long? This drive has totally changed for ACU. We thought they might have to punt. So it's been a good effort from ACU. Rovon Banks has made his presence known both blocking and running and Ethan Long, he's had a game. He's shown, you know, in these tough spots, if Keith Patterson needs someone, he can go out there. And I'm really impressed with what I've seen from him today. That was the quarterback battle in camp. It was between McIver and Long. McIver won the job. Long's in the game here. First and goal, Rovon Banks. Touchdown number two. ACU, an extra point away from a 10-point lead. Well, the fireworks are in the sky, but the fireworks are on the ground, Zach. This was all running on this drive. ACU looked fantastic, cutting up the middle. You know, some drives they've shown that they can run it, and some drives they've shown they can throw it. And like I said earlier, they've got to rush the ball. They've done that so far. That's a one-of-a-kind drive for Abilene Christian. Looked like they were going to have to punt it away, and instead it turns into a touchdown. Zepeda on the extra point. To make it 17 to seven. Nine plays, 77 yards in 345. That's a quality drive, Coy, from Adeline Christian right there. Yeah, like I said, it was just smart running. Smart running and speed, that'll pay off, and Western New Mexico's defensive line was given too much pressure there when the quarterback back up in the pocket. And if you can run it, that works too. Yeah, I mean, you, that play by Long, and then immediately the completion to Ballard and the rip of 28 yards there for Banks. Rovon Banks has looked pretty good tonight at the running back spot as well for ECU. Yeah, Jeremiah Dobbins gets a lot of credit, but Rovon Banks has looked so good today and coming out here playing the way he has, I mean, you let him get in that open field, he can accelerate. We talked about this on the air. There was just one rushing touchdown by a running back through the first three games of the season for Abilene Christian. Two tonight for Banks on the ground near the goal line. Less than two minutes now for Western New Mexico before halftime. Zapata sends it away. It is returnable. And they're going to bring it out, and that was not a good decision. David Tellis doesn't make the 15. So Western New Mexico 
down 10, under two minutes to go. We'll see, I'm curious the attack of this offense here. I'd, I'd try to get it up to your own 30 in this situation and then start airing it out, but you've got time. A minute 53 is a lot. You've still got three timeouts. Why not risk it a little bit? Larson and company start at the 15 yard line. And to the outside they go, safe throw, nice gain on first down along the sideline and a late flag, they'll get more yards on top of it for the hit out of bounds after Maurice Smith. It was a gain of five, but they're gonna get more. Personal foul, the late hit. And that changes things now as they're not so deep in their own side of the field. Balls, balls out of the 35 yard line. Yeah, Marie Smith on that last play looked really good, powering through the defensive back and now back in the backfield, see what they can come up with here with four receivers. Soft coverage at the bottom of your screen from Abilene Christian Larson, middle off the hands, incomplete. Looking to the middle of the field, and I think it was Byers who they were going for. He couldn't haul it in. Oh, the flag's down here. Hmm. Illegal block, personal foul coming back for Western New Mexico. They gain all the yards, and now they're right back where they started. Yeah, that's the difficulties of football. You slip up, the other team slips up, and here you are back in your same situation, first and 25. You're already going to air it out, so why not go from here? You've got a first down at least. Now you switch to thinking ACU has three timeouts. Do they try to stop the clock here a couple of times to get the ball back themselves with 103 seconds until halftime? First and 25. Just four men on the rush. Underneath, incomplete. That was timed up beautifully for these Wildcats by Patrick Jolly as they try to get it to Toby Shonike. Yeah, Jolly, good job finding his way in there. Not a Jolly good job, but a good job by Jolly. <laughs> Fantastic job running up in the middle there, though, preventing the pass, and those little yards weren't going to count too much, but... I know you've been waiting to say that all night, right? The oh, jolly yeah. good play. <laughs> Second down at 25 now for Western New Mexico. And this gets a little interesting. I, I'm not sure, if I wonder if they're gonna try to run it and force ACU to use some timeouts. They have one to snap it. Oh, they, they're just gonna get it off in time. And around the edge, no, they can't get there. Chike Nuanquo tackles Marie Smith. That's a loss of four. It's third down, and ACU calls timeout defensively. Nwankwo, he had that play from the moment the ball hit the quarterback's hands. He knew it. All it was was execution, and how did he do that? He ran down Smith as much as he could, and speed kills. Well, this game has changed completely, hasn't it? It was seven to nothing. And ACU was kind of methodically getting back into it with a field goal, then they got the touchdown. And now all of a sudden, this second quarter has been much more all ACU, and they got a chance to get the ball back here. It's third and 29. Well, Western New Mexico, they look like they had a little bit of a little bit of activity here on this possession, but that that illegal block really hurt them and really changed the momentum of this drive. Third and 29. Abilene Christian still has two timeouts. And so you figure they're going to try to make the tackle, call the timeout, and they'll have pretty good field position too. They'll flip it underneath, immediate tackle. Wow. Jordan Pop all over Chambers. Timeout ACU. 
That drive went nowhere fast for the Mustangs. Yeah, it did not. ACU's defense had the number the whole time. The Mustangs couldn't get anything going. And when they did, they slipped up. And that penalty looks a little worse for wear now. Fourth and 30. Clipping was a big deal. Yeah, and so they will have to punt it. Their original line of scrimmage on this set of downs was a 35. They lost 20 yards. And what that means is they're going to have to punt from the end zone. And so Kendall Catalan is going to get a chance at a return here. And he's a dangerous return man for Abilene Christian. Yeah, starting at about midfield, we saw Western New Mexico early in the game maximize these opportunities. ACU probably wants to flip the script. Rasmussen has three punts this year of over 50 yards. He is going to need another one. Standing at his goal line, Catalan's at the ACU 40. ACU nearly got there. Catalan on the sideline. What a great punt. That's going to go out of bounds. I imagine just inside the 40-yard line, or maybe right at it. Yeah, that was the right type of punt to have there for Catalan. He had to track it down, couldn't get it done. 45-yard punt, short field, a minute 16, and one timeout. Opportunity for ACU to get more points before the half. You ran the ball a lot last time, so if I'm Keith Patterson, I'm looking at my offense and I'm saying, we have this great receiving core. Catalan, Clark, go lightly. Why don't we just play with it a little bit? Air the ball out, see if we can't put something on the board before half. Long 12 for 15 through the air tonight. Going to do it again. Now he's going to go, and he will be taken down. Cervantes Reed. I don't know if that counts as a sack. It might. Behind the line of scrimmage, it's a loss of one. But Long was taking off. Clock runs under a minute now. Second and 11. He's going to get it out to Banks. Good idea. To the sideline he goes. Takes it across the 45. And a gain of eight. Third and short coming up. Yeah, coming up on that, that marker for first down, if you're the running back, Banks, you may want to try to stretch it for the first down. They'll have to move the change. But smart of him to run out of bounds and stop the clock completely. ACU's at the 47. Players have made his career long is 53, so they would need about the 35-yard line. So he's still looking at about 18 yards, but it's third down here. That's the bigger concern with 48 ticks. Long, middle, Kobe Clark inside the 40. And a pickup of 17 as they get closer to field goal range. When you're a guy like Clark, you wonder how he gets so many receptions, and that's just from being open in the field when others aren't. They're at the 37, long. Middle, oh, what a catch, Jed Castles. They're in field goal range now. What a stab to the 23. 14 impressive yards. Clock running. At the 23, first down. Long pressure, tackled outside the 30. It's a sack for David Melendez in a timeout ACU with 13 seconds. Yeah, Zach, that's exactly how you respond to that situation. Pressure the quarterback, take away the momentum, get him on the ground. And that's the last thing you can do if you're long in the situation is take the sack. Yeah. Mm, great play by Melendez. Off the edge. So now Coy talked to me 13 seconds. No timeouts. If you do something here, you have to do it very quickly and you have to get out of bounds to be able to get your field goal team out there. So we'll see how ACU handles this time Thir management here. 13 seconds is, is a good amount of time. It's, it's something that it can happen in that time. You've maybe got two plays to throw it, but keep your kicker warmed up in this situation, especially after that sack. But you have to throw it out of bounds or get out of bounds if you complete it. 
anything over the middle, you have to get at least 18 yards for the clock to stop. So dangerous situation here. From here, it's uh, about a 49-yard try. Long. Going to take a shot, and it's incomplete. Outside of the hands of Patrick Ballard, double coverage there. Is ACU going to mess with this? There's 10 seconds. Offense stays out there. Yeah, third and 18. You've got 10 seconds. Clock stop. Catch your breath. If you're Ethan Long, you've shown that you know what you can do tonight. You've just got to find someone up the middle. Doesn't have to be a great catch like Jed Castles had, though. <laughs> That was a spectacular catch. Then the sack puts him in this bind. Third down, 10 seconds, long down the sideline, incomplete for Golightly. And now the decision is made. Five seconds and fourth down, and ACU will try the field goal. Yeah, all credit goes to Gabriel Hernandez, the big man, number 91. A lot of pressure on Long there. Had to get rid of the ball or suffer the consequences. So it looks like 48 yards. For Zepeda. One for one in the ball game. Final play of the first half from 48 yards. It is no good. Wide to the right, and it remains a 10 point game. Here at the half, Abilene Christian up 17-7. Halftime report coming up after these messages. It is halftime here in Abilene, Texas, 17 to seven. ACU on top of Western New Mexico here at the break. And we say welcome upstairs to the broadcast booth, Zach Carlisle and Coy Oslin. It was an interesting first half, maybe surprising to a lot lower scoring. It took ACU a while to get going and now they lead by 10 at the break. Yeah, the Mustangs came out fighting, but ACU's shown what we expected to see from them later on. They've really taken momentum into their hands, and I think that's got to go with the hurry-up offense they've been using. Snap, 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 here we go. Get the ball down the field. Yeah, boy, Western New Mexico got off to a good start, especially defensively. Ethan Long has come in. He's provided a nice spark for ACU. He's shown that he can come into these situations, and that's a very good thing, especially when you're going to conference play for Coach Keith Batterson, seeing that your quarterbacks are on the same level and can get the job done. Yeah, he no question he can get it done. Big part of his offense has been one of the leading receivers in ACU history, Kobe Clark. So Let's talk more about on. Kobe. He's got four catches tonight. ACU TV's our own Connor Mullins had a chance to sit down with the senior from Sweetwater, Texas. So you start off at ACU as a walk-on, you receive a scholarship, you break the single season reception record in 2019. Now you're back at ACU for your final year. What has your time at ACU been like? Uh, it's just been amazing. Um, I've met a lot of people here. I mean, they'll probably be in my life a long time. Um, uh, the football aspect of being here at ACU has, has been great. Uh, um, kudos to Coach Doyle and them for just having me here, giving me this opportunity. Um, and the new coaches still just allowing me to ha have this opportunity to play and just uh, make a name for myself. But it's just been amazing. The people here at ACU are awesome. Um, I don't think I could ask for like a better opportunity, honestly, um, just to grow spiritually and uh, on the football field as well. You break the single season reception record in 2019. What was it like to play during that year? Uh, that year was awesome. Uh, I was kind of just, I was a sophomore. Uh, I was still a youngin, so just being able to have that much of an impact on the team for the team was just, I mean, it was amazing. Uh, kind of just gave me the respect for my teammates. Uh, just brought me closer to them as well. Um, just uh, that, that season was awesome, like I said, though. Just playing with Josh Fink, I mean, he's just a great dude. Uh, it was just an awesome year. You're from Sweetwater, so what does it mean for you to be from the big country, come to ACU, and you're starting to break some records? 
Uh, it's it's cool. Once again, I mean, uh, obviously I'm real close to home, so anybody from home can come watch my games at any time just for them to be able to come support. And then as well as just, um, just kind of already being familiar in the f community, just people from Abilene just kind of already knowing who I am is just kind of awesome. What would it mean for you to break running backs coach Jarrell Badon's reception record? It it would be cool. I mean, uh, just being in the conversation with him and uh, just Taylor Gabriel, Johnny Knox, just people like that. I mean, that's that's an honor. It really is. I mean, those are some of the greatest uh, receivers to ever come through ACU. And uh, I mean, just to be able to be mentioned in that conversation, it, I mean, it's a really cool deal. What would it mean for you to see Kobe break your record out on that field this year? Uh, it, it, it'd probably be awesome just to see that in real time. Uh, like I said, when I was playing, I, I never kind of thought about those records and all this stuff. I just knew I needed to continue on getting better each year. And, and for Kobe, I'd probably say the consistency of, of him and, and watching him every day at practice, uh, continually getting better. And, and uh, I, think it, I, mean, I, think it's, I think it's awesome. Has Coach Vidal given you any advice, you know, even though he's the running backs coach, prior to the season or now during the season? I kind of just noticed, like, if, maybe if I make a nice uh, catch in practice, I mean, you see him just clapping his hands, just supporting me. Uh, I mean, I think he just, he wants me to break it, honestly. I mean, he's a great dude, too. I mean, so I feel like he kind of is rooting for me to break that record. Seven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. End zone by David Tellis, and so the ball will come out to the twenty-five yard line all right so western new mexico up first here in the second half how do they get going a little bit here they had the short touchdown drive in the first half and they really struggled to move the ball they had some momentum in that last drive of the first half try to find that again try to find those guys up the middle try to hit your marks here it's just basic football boy they've got that receiver at the bottom of the screen well outside the numbers Quick throw to the outside to get the tight ends going a little bit. Corbin Gibson, a sophomore, transfer out of Garden City Community College and a native of Vero Beach, Florida. Good pickup on first down of seven yards. So just 75 total yards in that first half for these Mustangs. And on second and three, not much. Their run defense has really, really been pretty stout. Will Morgan there for Abilene Christian, along with Reese Young, the linebacker. And that's a loss of two. Yeah, just good read there from ACU's defensive line. That was a weak point there and looked good to go here in the second half. Third and five. Third down was not kind to either team in the opening half. Just two for eight was Western New Mexico on third down. Three receivers to the bottom for the Mustangs. Larson throws, caught, and a first. The quick slant to perfection, David Tellis is gonna pick up 10 and a first down. Well, if you're getting eaten up by the hurry up offense, why don't you bring a little bit of your own, bring a quick slant across the middle, 
find your man and move the chains. You've already proven you can get in the end zone. Why not do it again? Boy, those quick slants work really well, especially when you have a 6-5 quarterback. Larson, 6'5", 210 at a Gilbert, Arizona, the Iowa State transfer. Quick screen outside. They got blocking and a huge chunk on first down. They might have gotten the first. They did with Toby Shonike. 11 yards and a first. Yeah, good run there from Sonike. Found a line he could use and took it. Get the first down. Got that initial block on the edge. Takes it to the 48-yard line. Larson throws that one's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. I think it was Big Will Morgan who got his hands on that one. Second and 10. Yeah, Big's the right adjective there, 6'3", 305, and he can move. Junior out of Forney, Texas. Big part of the defensive line for Abilene Christian that played really well last week at Missouri as well. Keith Patterson, the head coach, telling us how happy he was with that performance. Second and 10. Larson too wide, looking for Tellus that time. Feels like an important early third down in the third quarter, because if they move it and have to punt it away, and AC, you know, it just, it feels like a momentum killer. They're, they're moving the ball here on this first drive. I think if you can get the first down or come up short, maybe go for it on fourth. You can make AC feel like they're on the ropes a little bit. And it's been a good drive so far. They brought the momentum they needed to. Third and 10, ACU rushes four. Larson takes the shot down the sideline and too long for Charles Byers and incomplete. So a couple of first downs for the Western New Mexico offense. And now they will have to punt near midfield. Good coverage there. Brandon Ramsey on that left side of the field was all over his target, Byers Jr., and broke up the play. Larson now 14 out of 27 for just 90 yards, completing less than 50, per, well, just over 50% of his passes. Rasmussen going to get into one. And it's going to take a nice hop, and it's going to stop at the one. 51-yard punt, a beauty from Jack Rasmussen. Yeah, all credit where credit is due. He's been a big part of this game. Rasmussen's done a good job of punting, and punters are players, man. <laughs> Caleb Gutierrez stops it at the one yard line. So here you go, ACU. First drive of the third quarter is from the one. But Ethan Long, a good first half, 15 out of 20 for 170 yards. 75% of his passes and a rating of nearly 150. And Jeremiah Dobbins is the running back to start the drive. And they'll give it to Dobbins right up the middle. A good little chunk to get outside the five. Yeah, Dobbins, he was a couple of inches away from breaking away there. They didn't have a lot of coverage in that backing area. And Dobbins is good. Seven yard chunk. It is a quality list of running backs for Abilene Christian. They feel like that's one of the better rooms in the whack in terms of running backs. Seven yard pickup on first, and now second and three. First drive of the third for ACU. Dobbins, second touch, one cut. Look at this kid go. The sophomore from Lubbock, Texas. There's a flag down, however, in the backfield. It's gonna be a very late hit. For now, it's a gain of 10. What does Michael Frain, our referee, have for us? His first time talking to us here in the third. His microphone is, we've had some trouble with that so far tonight. I don't think we can hear him at all, but it is a personal foul. It's a late hit. A 
And so his microphone not working in the stadium tonight. So, yeah. But uh, that's a late hit after the play. You take a look here. Ethan Long, a bit of a shoving match went on. Long got shoved late. And his lineman went and defended him, I'll tell you that. So that happened in the backfield after yeah. the play was over. So count the yards and then move it out to the 33 with a 15-yard penalty. Dobbins, third straight touch to start the drive. That's a four-yard gain. Pretty effective drive from someone that started at the one. Obviously, you get the penalty yardage, but field position has been something that ACU has not had today. Tylen Coleman and Dion Falao on the stop. After the four-yard pickup. We see you from the 37. Back to the ground again. Back to Dobbins. Can't make the line of scrimmage. Good play by Caleb Gutierrez. Gutierrez has been all over the place tonight for Western yeah. New Mexico. That's an interesting play call, in my opinion. You go back to a similar play, didn't work before, flip the sides, and didn't work out. Now you've got to try to air the ball out a little bit. ACU hasn't needed to throw it yet on this opening drive of the third. But now third and six. They need the 43-yard line. It's a blitz, five on the rush to the outside and a little wide for Tristan Go lightly incomplete and ACU will punt. Hey, take a look here. Good defense does the job. A little shove from behind, but nothing that's gonna hurt him. In coverage, Jordan Halliburton also can line up at linebacker, but that time covering go lightly out of the slot. Halliburton, the senior out of Arizona. Transfer from Arizona Western Community College. Burke to punt it. ACU got some yardage to get it outside from the one yard line. This is a fair catch by Tellis. At the 28, 37 yard punt. Western New Mexico will have it for the second time in the third. As a proud Texan, I want my family to have the best future possible. And that mission is also a part of the business I founded. At OSO, we strive to make a positive, impactful difference in the lives of our employees as well as our customers. Specifically, we want to love our neighbor as ourselves, and those values were shaped when I got my MBA from ACU. Accelerate your career online at acu.edu. The best tailgates start with the best beef. And the best beef starts with United Supermarkets. United Supermarkets, where we do beef the best. Get great seats, safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Back in Abilene here at Wildcat Stadium, this building that opened in 2017. Let's talk more about the atmosphere and the environment. Good crowd on hand. Let's send it down to the third member of our team, Paige Taylor. 
Thanks guys. ACU recently moved all tailgating inside of Wildcat Stadium in hopes to provide students with the environment to enjoy festivities in the game up close. I recently spoke with Craig Fisher, Director of Alumni Relations and Annual Projects here at ACU, about the university's plans to, to create a quote, energetic environment and a place where our students, alumni, and community can come together to have fun and support our teams. Now the university has made an effort to attract students from all parts of campus by bolstering the tailgating scene with the help of the local community and fraternities and sororities. So far this season, the early returns have been good among the student body. Back to you guys. Paige, thank you very much. Yeah, it has been a really nice turnout this year for the students at Wildcat Stadium. And as we get back to action, Western New Mexico has it for their second drive of this third quarter. Maurice Smith, the running back, will take it for a yard. Yeah, they can just try to find that momentum they had on that first drive. They looked good up till they got to about the 40, 50 yard line, but nevertheless, it's never a bad start to a drive. We talked about this a couple of times, but objectives tonight, mainly for both sides is tune up, get ready for conference next week and avoid injury, obviously. And Easier said than done. That pass caught on the outside by Vincent Rankin. First catch for the senior out of Los Angeles. Transfer from a couple of places. He started at West Los Angeles College and then went to Kentucky State before coming to Western New Mexico. Third and five for these Mustangs. They need their own 37. Five wide for Larson over the middle, incomplete. That was nearly intercepted by Chike Noankwo. And that's a three and out in the blink of an eye for Western New Mexico. I said this earlier, you want your linebackers to be able to play those snaps like that and elevate, be athletic. And Noankwo did a good job on that one. Just a heartbreaker slipping through the hands and Good three and out for this ACU defense. They look like they're on their game. Punt for Rasmussen, who has just been incredibly busy tonight. It's his eighth punt of the game. That's gonna hop. Oh, Catalan's gonna take it at the 26. He's electric. And now he's looking for the other side of the field and he's gonna go down at the 38 yard line, it's a 48 yard punt and a 15 yard return. Catalan wanted that one bad, Zach, he cut back. <laughs> Looked like Bo Jackson cutting back, trying to turn up field, didn't get what he wanted, but still just an electric return and not a ton of yards. This is a season long return for ACU. Well, Ethan Long in this offense, what's your been your thoughts on Ethan Long, the, the quarterback? We didn't think we'd see him tonight, but he's played pretty well. There's not a better time to prove yourself than in a game like this. It's a tune-up game, but position battles last all year. Everyone forgets that you leave summer training camp in two days, and here you are now. They'll start with Rovon Banks. A couple of touchdowns in the first half for Banks, and no gain here. You wanted to see the running game get going for ACU. 91 yards on the ground. They've run it 31 times, thrown it 25 tonight. Yeah, and you've got to get a good mix, and that's what these games are for. You talked about it's a tune-up. Find what you can do right and find out what you can do wrong. And you're going to have to mix it up a little bit, but they use the run game when they need to get back in front. Free rusher on long and a pass high for Rovon Banks. No one there <laughs> to block and that was a near disaster for Abilene Christian because that was a free rush from Cervantes Reed. Third and 10 for ACU. Offensive line has been up and down tonight, hasn't it? Yeah, they looked rough coming out of the gate, but they've cleaned up their act a little bit, but still got to find that that 
that drive they had in those early games against Lamar. Four-man rush, third down, Long can do this with his legs. He is going to try to shovel it forward out to Rovon Banks, and that'll be a three and out. No yardage on that drive for ACU. Yeah, we've talked about Long on his feet and with his arm, but his IQ is there. You know, you got to think quick in this situation, and you've got the pressure coming from the outside. Why not? Flick it away. It doesn't look like he panics in the pocket for ACU tonight, does it? And that's something that Ma Maverick McIver looks like he doesn't do either, and having a quarterback room like that's great. Logan Burke, he'll punt it from the 21. Returnable and nothing doing. Well covered for Abilene Christian. Roland Williams on the stop. Scoreless in the third. It's a 10 point game. They are having fun at Wildcat Stadium here tonight. ACU in front by 10, and this drive starts on the ground for Western New Mexico. Jamon Chambers, a redshirt freshman, they want to get him involved. Leading rusher this season coming in. Tonight, just a couple of rushing attempts for negative yardage. Second and eight. And oh, there down goes Larson. ACU gets home. Kirby, no, rather, yeah, Kirby Coheely. Take a look at uh, the scores around the, the league, and actually it's up to 98 nothing now. SFA is rolling. They scored 35 in the first quarter and 24 more in the second quarter. They are having a lot of fun in Nacogdoches tonight. Utah Tech, that's a standard score, yeah. 24 to 10. 17 to seven, that's a standard score. 98 to nothing is unbelievable. You don't see that very often at all. Looks like a fun battle going on in Utah also. Utah Tech is what's up next for ACU. Nice play, Roland Williams knocks that free from David Tellis, and we are getting three and outs before you can spell those words. These are being real quick. Yeah, just this deep in your own backfield, it's hard to find any momentum. ACU did a good job earlier, but Western New Mexico can't get anything done. Gonna go back to the leg of Rasmussen, and you know, I would feel comfortable doing that. <laughs> Doesn't 98 to nothing seem like a typo? Like, that's insane. It, I, I can't even comprehend well, that. Well, before we came back, I pointed at it, asking you if it was a typo, <laughs> and was not a typo. Short punt. That's going to go out of bounds at the 42. Abilene Christian will have very good field position after the 28-yard punt. We got to see some scoring here in this third quarter at some point, don't we? Yeah, you've got to, and maybe ACU's trying a couple of things, but I think they'll be fine here. Western New Mexico, I expected them to come out of the gates a little bit hotter, kind of similar to how they started the game, but it's been it's been difficult. But their defense has looked really good too. Ethan Long, 15 out of 23, 170 yards. He hasn't made the big mistake. I mean, he's been sacked a couple of times tonight, but for the most part, he has really done a good job. Hands off, Jeremiah Dobbins, speaking of doing a good job. Look at this. A ton of room on that right side of the line. Takes it to the 23 for 19. Yeah, what a really good run there. He can accelerate up the middle when he gets the chance, and. I think you talked about this running back room that ACU has is really impressive on paper, but you know where they're really impressive is on the field also. He's up to 86 on the ground on 13 carries. By man rush, Long taking a shot to the end zone too far. For Tristan Golightly. Let's go back to the Dobbins run. Yeah, look at this, another 
pocket created. He didn't even take the big pocket. He ran up and very, very good. He met him up the middle. Yeah, he wasn't touched until he was tackled and 20 yards then, later. Even then if he wanted to, he could have kept chugging, just ran out of room. Second and 10. Three receivers to the bottom of your screen for Abilene Christian. Three receivers bunched up. Going to hand it to Dobbins. Ton of room again. Oh, look at the spin move to the 10. 21's having himself a night. Every time he gets the ball, it looks like he attached the ball to a bottle rocket. He just goes for a little bit and gets you the yards he wants. Back to him, and he's going to lose ground that time. Great play up front. Nazir Malloy is that senior out of South Carolina. He's impressive at just six foot one. Transfer from Fort Hayes State in Kansas. I'm going to be really interested to see what this Western New Mexico defense can do when they get into Lone Star play. Obviously, schools like Angelo State and West Texas A&M in there. These defenses look good tonight. Gets tough with Midwestern State for homecoming next weekend yeah. as well. That's going to be a great one out west. Second and goal, long to the end zone. Couldn't find Clark. Just a little too wide in the back corner. Yeah, that's one of those plays that if you're Kobe Clark, you probably would put maybe just a tick more on if this were conference play, but no reason to try to stretch yourself out. Get hurt, does a good job running his route, but a little overthrown. And I think that's one of the things we've seen from Ethan Long today that hasn't been amazing is his passing in the red zone. Not exactly hitting the marks he needs to. Third and goal at the 11. Off the fake, into the flat. Clark, long way to go, nice move. Broke a tackle and out of bounds he goes. A gain of a couple, and this will be a field goal try for ACU. Good job by Western New Mexico. Yeah, good read on that one, too. They didn't chase Dobbins at all. They saw the ball in Long's hand. He tossed it over to Kobe Clark, and Clark couldn't get enough yardage. So Blair Zepeda for the short field goal. Well, and there are coaches and trainers out onto the field, though. It's an injury all the way on the ACU sideline, almost near the boundary of the stadium up near the cement lining. Something happened over there with Kenny White. And we're going to take a timeout because of that. Injury timeout here in Abilene, Texas. In the WAC, we value sportsmanship. On the field and in the stands. We take pride in playing fair and being honest. We honor the game by showing respect. For our opponents and the officials. The fans and our team. Great sportsmanship is about taking ownership after a loss. And being humble after a win. We want you to team up with us. By staying positive on the sideline. Because great sportsmanship is what unites us. We, we are the Western Athletic Conference. As a single mom and a always dreamed of doing something that would make a difference, and so getting as much knowledge as possible was important to me. I love the fact that you can dream a new reality and then see it come true with hard work. Today, I know I'm making a difference, and a big part of seeing my dream come true was when I got my master's at ACU. Get your undergraduate or graduate degree on UTV. 
Hutton Harris, Tom Searle, and the student run crew that put these games on the airwaves for you. ESPN Plus. Four and a half here in the third. There they are. Peek behind the curtain running our show tonight. And Abilene Christian is about to kick a field goal out of the injury timeout. It's from 25 yards. Zepeda's made one and missed one. And this one is right down the middle. ACU 20 to 7 in front. Stalling inside the 10, but they get three more. We've got points here in the third quarter. They look good on the ground in that last go there, trying to do a little pass offense there in the red zone. Couldn't get it done, couple overthrows, but also good stops from New Mexico, Western New Mexico's defense. Stumbled myself there again, but not the score on the board I thought I would see. Yeah. 20 to seven, Abilene Christian, after a seven play, 34 yard drive in just under two minutes. Okay, so we were talking about that game, right? That Stephen F. Austin game, 98 to nothing, right? That's a new whack record. The old whack, whack record was 83 points by BYU 42 years ago in 1980. BYU no longer in the whack. Yes, of course. Uh, but, uh, and there's still three minutes left of that game, so they may add to that. But they've already broken it by 15 599 points. yards of offense for SFA, too. Is that a little less than I actually would have thought in 98 yeah. point game? Zapata kicks it off and out the back of the end zone it goes. Those 80s BYU teams were something else, My though. My goodness. When whack football in that heyday when they had Hawaii and BYU and Wyoming, Colorado State. Goodness. FCS conference now and still kind of rebuilding football in a way, just the five teams in the WAC. And so not enough to have an automatic qualifier into the FCS playoffs, so they're joining forces with the Atlantic Sun again this year to get that AQ bid. First down, it is to the air and incomplete. Devin Larson looking for Jeremy Cooper, the junior out of California. Yeah, just in and out of Cooper's hands there. Something we've seen a couple of times today. Regain your composure, go back out there, trying to get the ball downfield. Larson, just 94 yards through the air. It's been hard pressed to come by tonight. Four on the rush, Larson hit as he throws, and it's complete. He fitted right in. And then Cooper carries Anderson across the 40-yard line. That's a great throw under pressure. Really, really good throw there. Take a look at this. This is a guy who wants to take a hit. He's tough. He can throw the ball. His whole goal is how far can I get down the field. He does not care if he takes the hit or not. He'll get him over 100 for the game now. First down to the 41. A little bit of life here for these Mustangs who trail only by 13. First down to the air, adjusting and making the catch. Spectacular effort from Vincent Rankin. 29 yards down the sideline. Yeah, Patrick Jolly, it looked like he had an issue with his shoe. He keeps messing with his shoe. Kind of stumbled up, but Rankin made the move and what an adjustment, really, though, in, in, in mid-stride to make that catch. Late in the third, Western New Mexico driving down just 13. Fake the toss. Oh, on the move. Nice wheels. Larson going to get around the edge, and that's a heck of a job to get as much out of that as possible. They're going to give him maybe four on that. Well, oh, no, they are going to say he was stepped out of bounds earlier. So he did lose two, but he did about as well as he could on that one. Good job for Will Morgan, the defensive tackle on that play. Moved across field, big fella can get up and go. Initially, a referee was signaled for about a three or four yard pickup, but it's a loss of a couple. Second and 12. They're not in field goal range just yet. Career long is 45 for Zamudio, and quick throw to the right side. 
Ortiz able to make the catch. Coheely on the stop. And third down coming up. Yeah, a mistake a lot of guys will do on a catch like that that Ortiz did a good job of was turning around and getting going immediately. Those yards are going to count, those extra ones he picked up, turning around and getting going. So Now they're in field goal range, but they want more than that. Third down and five. Big play here late in the third. AC's bringing the house. Quick slant, knocked away. Roland Williams got in the way of that pass to Alan Ortiz, and it's fourth down. I think that was one the ACU defense had seen. If you'll look right here, they made an adjustment right before the snap. They read that play very quickly, what was going on there, and good jump from the defensive line gets the stop going. Roland Williams, the senior out of Arlington, Tennessee. And this will be a field goal try. It's going to be from 42 yards. Career long is 45. It's also the season long for the freshman Zamudio. And this kick is off to the left. And it stays left. No good. First miss of the season for Zamudio. All for naught for Western New Mexico. Boy, they moved it down the field. Offense looked good on that drive, and they come up empty. Yeah, they looked really good. That ACU defense really locked down and did a good job preventing the passes that, that, that were coming close from falling. There were a couple of dropped ones there that could have been something, but tough field goal there on the doink at the bottom, but Nevertheless, ACU gets the ball back, still up 13. And Western New Mexico has not played bad tonight. They really have, have done a pretty darn good job. Up to 150 total yards of offense. ACU hands it off to start their drive, and it's Rovon Banks. These running backs are something else for these Wildcats. If you can jump over a downed man like that and keep going, you're a good running back. Much more athletic than myself. Don't think the knees could do it, but good going there from Banks. Something we've seen from him all day. 16 yards, ACU goes quickly. Banks has room again. Takes a hit there at the end from Gutierrez, but another solid gain. Give him seven. This Two plays later, they're up by midfield. This Western New Mexico team, I, I, I've seen no quit from them, though. They, they're not out of this by they, any means. They came here to win. 20 to seven. ACU's had to settle for a couple of field goals tonight. Long off the fake. Gonna throw Kobe Clark, a busy night for number eight. Into Mustang territory for a gain of a dozen. I think about that old adage of let's just chuck it up and hope that so-and-so is there. And that's Kobe Clark on this ACU team. He finds a way to get freed up. That play action rollout works wonderfully for Long. He's really looked good tonight. 17 out of 27 for number four. Lots of time to throw. Looks down the field for Ballard incomplete. Knocked away by Chase Perkins, the corner. That was spectacular defense. Looked like it was a little underthrown. Yeah, it looked a little underthrown. Had to make an adjustment halfway through, Patrick Ballard did. You'll see this, he kind of slowed up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that gave Perkins the chance to get the stop. Swat that thing down. Second down from the 40. 330 total yards of offense tonight for Abilene Christian. Now on the fake, long to the flat, nothing. Jed Castles. Jacob Vasquez on the stop. Loss of one, third and 11 here. Yeah, they're just trying to burn the clock, it feels like at this point. Castles had a hard start to the day. Loses one there. We've seen a couple of good things from him. It is a final in Nacogdoches. 98 to nothing was the final. They didn't get to 100, I wasn't sure. Maybe they were going to get to triple digits down there tonight. 
20 to seven here, third and 11 for Abilene Christian. And that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. ACU by 13, WAC football on ESPN. Resumes after these messages. Start of the fourth quarter in Abilene, Texas. And ACU on third down, Ethan Long is sacked. What a way to start the fourth for Western New Mexico. David Melendez. And so Abilene Christian will punt and we are just getting started in quarter number four. WAC football on ESPN, Zach Carlisle, Coy Oslet, Paige Taylor and the gang. Western New Mexico is definitely not out of this game. Yeah, I said it earlier, they came here to play, and in these interdivisional matchups, these schools come here, they maybe play a little less, they know we're going to lose, but you got to come in with a winning mentality. They have tonight. Their defense has really stood up when they've needed to the most. Burke punts it. Fair catch. They're going to let it go. It is going to drop at the two. 48-yard punt, a beautiful punt from Logan Burke. Well, down that inside the five. Yeah, Western New Mexico getting a taste of their own medicine here. Mm -hmm. Excellent punt. Took the perfect sideways hop, didn't it? Well done. Well, nothing like starting in the end zone, basically. Two yard line for Western New Mexico. Boy, they've moved at these last couple drives. Yeah. They just can't finish them off. Missed the field goal last time out. But now from the two. Devin Larson, quick throw. Good start to the drive. Out across the 10. And maybe out to the 15 or so. They'll mark him at the 14. It's Charles Byers who has the lone touchdown for the Mustangs today. Yeah, they've looked really good this second half. They just can't finish the drive right. Obviously missed the field goal, but they found themselves moving the ball. From the 14, Larson to throw it to the middle. Did that skip in there? No, or is that a catch? Do not see a signal, and they're coming backwards. So incomplete looking for Shonike on that one. Yeah, that was an interesting situation. Still really good throw there by Larson. He had the whole defensive line coming at him there and still got the ball away. I never saw the incomplete signal from the officials there, but they put it right back at the 14, so incomplete for Shonike. Got two grabs for 11 yards tonight. Larson, quick slant. They hit it this time for about six to Allen Ortiz. And third down coming up here early in the fourth. Ortiz, he's had a, he's had a good day today. And a tough situation all around, not being able to finish your drives. But if you make something happen here, you're still in this. Third and four. Down just 13. And now a stoppage. And a timeout on the field. Third down for Western New Mexico when we come back. Our early leaders sought a new campus on which to build a better future. Surely they could not have imagined how much their vision would grow. Today, Abilene Christian is recognized in national benchmarks for student success outcomes, research productivity, and athletic accomplishments. As we embark on next steps, we are uniquely poised to become one of the nation's premier Christian universities. We invite you to join us. We will climb higher together. In the WAC, we value sportsmanship on the field and in the stands. We take pride in playing fair and being honest. We honor the game by showing respect for our opponents and the officials, the fans and our team. Great sportsmanship is about taking ownership after a loss and being humble after a win. We want you to team up with us by staying positive on the sideline. Because great sportsmanship is what unites us. We, we are the Western Athletic Conference. As a single mom and a
As a single mom and a full-time nursing assistant, I knew going back to school could be a challenge, but ACU made online school easy for me. From the start, I felt safe, supported, and even comforted by the faculty. With their encouragement and help, I'm getting my degree in healthcare administration and showing my girls they can overcome any obstacle and dare to achieve their dreams, just like their mom. Pursue your undergraduate or graduate degree online at Abilene Christian University. Abilene Christian called the timeout defensively, and so now third down and four for Western New Mexico. We'll see what Devin Larson and company can do from the 20. Third down, four-man rush. They're going down the sideline, and an extra effort but incomplete. Just out of bounds was uh, Shonike, or rather that was Byers. And they tried the deep shot, and it's incomplete. And Western New Mexico will have to punt after picking up a first down. I'm having a hard time with that play call going deep on a third and four, especially this late in the game that you're still hanging in. and Very much still in the game. Does not work out. Maybe a short slant would have worked. It's worked all day. Another punt for Rasmussen. I have said his name so many times tonight. Tenth punt for Jack Rasmussen to the 36, returnable for Catalan. And he'll take it to the 42, six yard return. After a 44 yard punt. So Abilene Christian, I think a lot of ups and downs, not, a, not everything hasn't been great tonight, but the 13 point lead and maybe they can add to it here. Yeah, the 13 point lead, definitely not what I thought we would be talking about this late in the game, but you've got a lot of good things to walk away from this game with. I, I think the two are Ethan Long and Rovon Banks. I, I think that, that their performances today have been above standard. And I think for a team that's as young as this is, that's fantastic to see. Drive starts at the 41 and it is Banks. Takes it for a handful. Nazir Malloy's been busy tonight, the senior defensive lineman out of South Carolina. After a gain of three. Just curious how these Wildcats want to continue to attack. There's been some inconsistencies on the offensive side tonight. I'd go back to what you said earlier. Let's run the clock down right now. We've got a two-score lead and try not to get hurt. Banks, another touch. Tried to cut it up. They get a couple more yards and so third and five on the way for ACU. Yeah, Long wanted a little blocking action on that play. I saw him dance around a little bit there with the defensive end, but Couple yards at a time, run that clock down, take your time in between plays, no reason to rush it at this point. Both teams are three for 14 on third down in the game. Defenses have played very well on this down tonight. Long middle, it's Castles, where did he catch it? It looks like he's short, well then now he pushes forward. Oh, that, <laughs> there's a lot to sort out there. Did Jed Castles do that all on his own? They're moving the chains first down. That was incredible. Yeah, Jed Castles, good job snagging that one and hauling it in. I like to see the way he continued forward progress on that. One of those things you've really got to be happy about if you're Keith Patterson. Yeah, the, the officials did a good job of letting that continue because he had caught it initially, and then when he came back down, was on the ACU side of the 50, and then worked his way for the first. Banks in some space. Boy, is he so quick at the point of attack. 13 yards in a blink of an eye. I love watching him take off and accelerate. When he gets into the backfield, too, look at him charge forward. It's like trying to stop a semi with a butterfly net. Going to charge up the middle there. 
knock over a couple while you're at it. He's going to be thrilled that you said that about a kid who's 5'10", 200 pounds. Okay, then a Corvette with a, with a butterfly net. <laughs> Lightning McQueen, is that what we're... <laughs> yeah. From the 36, here he goes again! Rovon Banks! 16 more. He is a special talent. Insanely athletic, I mean, even good on his feet, saw him stumble there a little bit, but kept charging. Banks is up to 114 on the ground tonight to go with his two touchdowns on 17 carries. He's averaging seven yards a pop. From the 20, why not go right back to him? He's going to get one, maybe. Well played that time. Just watching the way that he plays ball, the way he runs up the field, that's not a guy that's tracking his own stats. That's someone that just wants the end zone bad. He wants a hat trick tonight. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're, they're going to give him a breather now and bring out Jeremiah Dobbins. Six plays, 39 yards on a drive so far, and a lot of that's been number 14. Dobbins, his turn. He's run for 15, 15 carries, 98 yards tonight. Long's going to put it up. Looking for Clark. He's got it. What a throw. Spectacular catch. Touchdown. Zach looking back at this one. He is just fantastic. That's something you can't teach as a catch like that. 17th career touchdown for Kobe Clark. How great was that throw? Really good throw. Like I said, that catch, though, that's something you can't teach. But Ethan Long, have yourself a day. You finally show some effectiveness in the red zone. Not that he wasn't showing effectiveness, just been struggling when they get towards the end of the field. and. Always a good time to score a touchdown. The first career touchdown toss at ACU for Ethan Long. The extra point caps off a seven play, 59 yard drive. ACU leads by 20. Uh, a perfect throw from Ethan Long. And Abilene Christian in front, 27 to seven, ever so slightly separating themselves from Western New Mexico, who's put up a fight tonight here at Wildcat Stadium. Zapata out the back of the end zone. That goes, and how about this perfect throw from Long to Clark for the TD. Yeah, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm Ethan Long, I'm feeling really good about myself after this day. Just plop back, easy Saturday afternoon wow. toss. When you got Kobe Clark down there, you can't feel too nervous Man. about throws like that. Man, he made that look easy, didn't he? That was right in there, Clark to the ground, able to go over the shoulder for the TD. And so now, Western New Mexico. Starts from the 25. And Larson, quick throw. Oh, nice play to break it up. Abner Dubar puts the hit on Vincent Rankin. That is as perfectly played by a safety as you can have. Eagle, clean hit. Breaks up the pass, second and 10. Yeah, just rebound here. They're going to throw it a lot here. Obviously, we talked about big throwing offense. Now down 20. That's behind the intended target. And I believe that was Rankin again. Yeah, that might have been Smith out of the backfield. Yes, it was. Third and 10 now. This is taking just 10 seconds.
Now third and ten. Four-man rush for ACU. Larson nowhere close. Tell us the closest receiver, but a three and out in 15 seconds. Yeah, Larson, he just overthrew it there. Not much to say about it. A couple yards overhead. I'd keep my head held high, though. You showed really good effort today as a team, and nine minutes is a lot of time. And they'll punt it for the 11th time with Jack Rasmussen. And, you know, Adelaide Christian playing a Division II school, you could say how well their defense has played. But, boy, this has been the theme for the season for ACU. They have played really good defense in 2022. Catalan going to get another chance from the 24, and he bobbled it. Looked like he is going to get back on top of it, and there is a flag down. It is on the near side at the 30. So we'll check the marker, and that was a bobble from Catalan. So we'll see. So the official will get the word from Michael Frame, the referee. It's a hold against ACU. They'll add to that on the return. Under nine minutes to go tonight. Abilene Christian comfortably up by 20. Abilene Christian in front 27 to seven. Under nine minutes to go. Here in the fourth quarter tonight, Zach Carlisle and Coy Oslin up here in the booth. Paige Taylor on the sideline and the entire gang for WAC football on ESPN. ACU to the ground, Tyrese White. And we figure to see a lot of running here as ACU leads it 27 to seven. Yeah, quiet, quite a bit of things going on on the ground there. Tyrese getting a getting to go there. Looks a little sore after that one. Yeah, just his third carry of the season. And it brings out the electric Robon Banks. We can't talk enough about this kid tonight. He's going to go back out after White. Ooh, hobbles off. Gain of two for White. And now Banks. Here he goes again. Oh, my goodness. He is unbelievable, 24 yards. I said this to you during the break, you don't see a lot of guys like this that are that hard to stop, but the way he just runs over guys. That's the biggest part of his game, but he can also accelerate, and that's good. Jeremiah Hartfield finally got to him, but not until he got out to the 38. Kids up to 138 yards tonight on the ground. Long, going long, Patrick Ballard got it! That's just having fun right there. Chuck 40 it 40 yards. Wow. I mean, look at this, just, you knew he was gonna catch it, it just felt that way. ACU, they're, they want to keep taking shots and scoring points and slinging it around the yard. Now they go back to the ground, back to Banks. I mean, Ethan Long has made some very impressive throws tonight for Abilene Christian. You know, if I'm Keith Patterson, I'm really happy about how my team has performed, but I'm also really worried about the battles I got going on in positions now. Makes it harder on the coaching staff oh, to yeah. pick who's out there on the field. Goodness. Four yard gain for Banks. Second and six. Back to him. Oh, and he fumbled. And ACU's gonna recover that. That's Rafiti Jirmai, the right tackle, who jumps on it. First mistake tonight. 
for Banks. Yeah, you look at Banks, and I let this one slide with his numbers today, but Jeremiah, really good, smart football IQ, getting on that ball and getting getting it back in possession. I mean, I don't know if that's a mistake or just a great play by Lucas Lucero, the freshman who ripped. I mean, he ripped that thing out of there. That was a really good play. Yeah, in Western New Mexico, they've shown that a lot today. They've shown their card in that regard that they're going to rip at that ball a lot. Yeah, they've, they've got the lone forced turnover in that regard. They forced a fumble earlier. Long time to throw. He's going to head to the sideline, take off. He's got some speed, and he'll run all the way to the 10, and that's a first down. He's poised in the pocket. He's able to get outside and take it for the first. Yeah, they've run all over Western New Mexico this fourth quarter. He just saw his opening and took it. And there's not really much you can do if you're Western New Mexico in that situation. You've got to cover your man if you're a defensive back. But Ethan Long's shown everything he's got today is worth it. They marked him at the 11, so they can get a first down at the 1. Jeremiah Dobbins wrestled forward by Devin Graham. You were kind of talking to me uh, off during the break about if ACU converts in the red zone, this game might even be further than 27 to seven. Yeah. They'll work on that here to try to get another touchdown. And that red zone offense, passing offense has struggled today. I've said that a couple of times, but I think they're finding their groove and, and that's that's just a big a part of it, as, of it as anything. And if you can finish the drive, that's what's important. Dobbins goes over 100 yards tonight now with that last carry. And a flag before the snap. Well, we haven't been able to hear Michael Frayne at all tonight, but he's given us a lot of hand motions. That's a false start. Moves that back to the 12. So second down coming up. Again, ACU can get to the one for a first down. Four and a half to go as ACU is on their way to their second consecutive three and one start. Long time to throw, look into the end zone miscommunication between him and Davion Johnson. Looked like Johnson broke off his route. But another flag. This one's in the backfield, it appears. Yeah, they're having to talk it over here. Get on the same page. an unsportsmanlike conduct on Western New Mexico after the play. Oh, that's the type of thing that Philip V. Hill will be frustrated with at the end of the game. Maybe not even the score, but it's those types of mistakes. Yeah, and when you see that, that's the second time that's happened today. Once on defense and now once on, or well, once on offense and now once on defense. And in this situation, you're frustrated because you played good for three quarters and Still talking here. But wait, there's more. Well, hold that thought, and we'll just move to first and goal. Busy night for the officials. I mean, we, we haven't heard any of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a busy night for the officials. All right, first and goal after that at the seven. Jeremiah Dobbins fights through the shoe tackle and gets it down to the three. Well, he did not want to go down. He chugged through that defensive line and into the backfield, but 
me get a look at this here. Grabbing everything he could was Jacob Vasquez. When every single one of your running backs can run through somebody, that's a good feeling. 10 points in the second half for ACU. They lead it by 20, looking for more. Three and a half to go tonight. Dobbins smothered. And again, Vasquez is in there. Yeah, you're in the red zone here. Run the ball a couple times, trying to get that clock down and minimize their next possession. Comfortable lead. Don't overthink it. Two rushing TDs for Rovon Banks. The touchdown through the air to Kobe Clark. And now third and goal at the four. It's a fake. They throw it and an easy walk in. Touchdown. Reese Stafford, the junior tight end from Frisco. Gets in on the fun tonight for ACU. Good job for Stafford. You're going to feel good about yourself there in that situation. Rolled out to the right. Stayed his distance and caught the ball. Take a look at it here. Lines up at fullback. Yeah. You got to love those jumbo packages down near the goal yeah. line. These are the times where football's fun for a team, but. You've played a good game. You've played a good fourth quarter. Second half has been much improved for Abilene Christian. And yes, this will be two TDs now in the fourth. And Blair Zepeda for the extra point, capping off an 11 play, 88 yard drive. Under three to go, ACU on their way. friend that went to Dort for a while. Abilene Christian up 34 to seven here at home under three minutes to go tonight. They look to improve to three and one here in the 2022 season on this crazy Saturday around college football. Returnable, but it will not be taken out of the end zone by Tellus. Well, what's coming up? Let's take a peek at Western New Mexico. They're back home for homecoming next week for Midwestern State in the Kingsville, October the 8th. Angelo stayed in town after that, and then they'll head up to Canada to take on Simon Fraser. All of those in that Lone Star Conference excited about the future of their team. Two and two they're going to be going in, but one and one in the games that mean the most for these Mustangs in LSC play. First down, they will keep the starters out there and complete a pass to the outside. And it appears it's Alan Ortiz. No, it is actually Jeremy Cooper. A two and a half coming up. So, well, I think we mentioned a, a break from Lone Star play and then the Mustangs will head back into that next week. Meanwhile, Abilene Christian, so they play 11 games and only five are in conference. So six of them are outside yeah. of league play, including these first four on the season. Second down to the ground and a couple of yards there. Speaking of the Wildcats, what's coming up for ACU? League play starts next week in St. George, Utah, Utah Tech. The first game this season against Stephen F. Austin is a non-conference game. They will host SFA to end the season here at home. Southern Utah for homecoming on October the 15th as well. You talked about that non-conference schedule for ACU this year. Really quality teams, North Dakota, yeah, Prairie View, A&M, Lamar. ACU will have North Dakota on the road 
two days before Halloween. Third and eight. Larson taking a shot. Feet tangled. Oh, it's intercepted. Peyton Mansell has the pick. He takes it back to the 20 yard line. That is just the second interception for ACU this year. And the team captain, Peyton Mansell, the former quarterback, gets a pick. Yeah, the QB convert. Really interesting situation there, but that one was just a floater and good read by him. He's known for his legs. He can move when he needs to. He charged for that ball. Man, look at that sideline. That's loving your captain right there. They respond to him in ways like they've never seen. That's what Keith Patterson has told us throughout the course of the year. Moved him from quarterback to safety this year. Plays a backup role at the safety spot and is one of the team captains. Is the overall team captain. They named four yeah. this year. He's the overall team captain. And how about that? to cap off the Saturday night for Abilene Christian. ACU back to the ground. And they are going to get Malachi Medlock involved, the freshman running back. We saw a lot of time last week at Missouri out of Duncanville, Texas. And a minute to go tonight. Pretty exciting to see that pick there from Mansell. Yeah, that's one of those, you feel good about yourself seeing that. That's, that's what college football is about, Zach. Five yard gain. And into the victory formation go the Wildcats. Well, I'm telling you what, there's uh, something interesting brewing at the quarterback position here. For Abilene Christian Coy, Ethan Long, your thoughts on how this junior transfer from Arizona State played tonight? For it's been ACU. a fantastic effort from ACU today. If, if you're Western New Mexico, you have to feel good about yourself, though. Yeah, they played really hard. How'd you think about the way Ethan Long played tonight? Ethan Long has made his debate to be the starting quarterback of this team going into conference play, which is not what you want to hear. Abilene Christians 3-0 three and, three and at home for the first time since 2019 with a 34-7 victory over Western New Mexico tonight. This has been a presentation of the Western Athletic Conference on ESPN. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. Until next time, Zach Carlisle, Coy Oslin, Paige Taylor, the whole gang led by Hutton Harris and Tom Searle saying so long, take care, good night from Abilene, Texas.